Hello and welcome. Today we have with us Ms. Shubha Kumar, who is the Managing Director of Nadesan Synchrocons, one of the largest tier one company supplying a lot of components to well-known OEMs in India and across the world. The company also supplies components to large tier one companies worldwide. A B.Tech from IIT Madras, MS from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and MBA from Stanford University. Shubha was instrumental in Nadesan's foray into aerospace and defense. Under her leadership, the organization adopted a dynamic R&D strategy to keep pace with the challenges and opportunities from rapid advances in technology. One of the toughest decisions Shubha had to make was to return to India, leaving behind a successful career in the US. Her decision to enter manufacturing turned out to be an interesting and rewarding experience. The opportunity to have an impact, be it on people, technology, operations or on customers, keeps her motivated every day. She enabled the creation of Society of Women Engineers IIT Madras Alumni Association Affiliate Program. Shubha mentors students from high school to college and working professionals. She was actively involved in setting up the mentoring program for entrepreneurs, students and alumni by the IIT Madras Alumni Association. Shubha is currently the chairperson of Automobile Component Manufacturers Association of India, Southern Region. Very nice, interesting uh, to learn about your you know, leadership journey. So can you share some of uh, one or two interesting anecdotes? So, uh, I'd start about a time when I was uh, early in my career, when I joined Natasin right out of, uh, you know, grad school. Um, so, on the, uh, so I was uh, working on the shop floor with my colleagues. Uh, most of my colleagues, uh, so I was this young uh, woman on the mm. shop floor and mm. Uh, mm. all my colleagues were, uh, mm. you know, senior people. Mm. Um, so, to be able to get their credibility was not easy. Um, doesn't matter what one's qualification is or mm. anything else, you really, ha or your position was, you have to mm. get yourself mm. um, the credibility. Mm. And uh, what I tell my junior colleagues now mm. is, you have to earn your stripes. And that's the lesson I learned fr from that time. Yeah. Uh, initially, I couldn't get buy in. But gradually, as I started showing that I could bring mm. value to them and mm. what I was saying was right and reasonable. Mm. Uh, I started getting their uh, buy-in and it became much easier mm. to uh, put through my ideas and drive change. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that is uh, something that I've learned uh, very early on in my career. Okay. The uh, uh, second anecdote uh, mm. that I can think of is uh, there was a time we had to uh, mm. make an urgent dispatch to a customer. Mm -hmm. uh, materials were moving by air and uh, it was a holiday. This was a time when we used to have these uh, excise duty was okay. uh, in place. So before you move material, you had to mm. sign mm. the document to move the materials out of the factories. Mm. Um, and being a holiday, all the signature signature mm. authorities who had uh, the mm. right were My on God. leave. <laughs> okay. It was a long holiday. Okay. Uh, but the material, if it didn't go catch that flight uh, that afternoon, mm. uh, would have led to a line down at the customer end uh, in that Germany. Would have been a great, uh, a very yeah. big impact. Yeah. So, uh, what uh, actually we did was, uh, our chairman was a signature authority mm -hmm. <laughs> from uh, historical reasons and uh, hence I requested him and he immediately agreed. So, he and I went to the plant and uh, got the excise documentation uh, completed mm -hmm. and uh, he could have left after that but actually he said, no, no, let's go and uh, you know, courier it ourselves. Okay. Uh, because we were very thin on uh, staff on that day because everybody had gone on uh, okay. vacation. So, we came back uh, to around Katipara, there's a, a courier company. So, it was put in there and oh. uh, flown out that same afternoon. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, the learning there is mm -hmm. uh, again, the customer is number one priority. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two is no job is too small. Okay. There is dignity in everything that we do. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you're chairman or the last person in the organization, uh, every job has dignity and we need to do it with respect. No job is too small. <laughs> Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. Uh, that will actually take a lot of people to a greater heights because uh, paying attention to minute details and then getting involved in the entire process. 
very good so but uh, has your decision or decisions have your decisions impacted someone in the factory someone in the office uh, in their life in their career uh, how has it changed them sure uh, again i go back to my uh, first stint at natesan early in my career um, i think it changed uh, it impacted me and the person i'm going to talk about um so in those days i was learning from a fire hose right i was uh, you know i had an engineering degree and uh, uh, and so on but uh, manufacturing on the shop floor is very different a uh, mm -hmm. lot of things are new and uh, i got to learn but at the same time i also needed to bring in a lot of new systems mm -hmm. um so one of the things i was trying to do was to bring in statistical process control on mm -hmm. the shop floor mm -hmm. and uh, uh, i had uh, a couple of uh, you know um, uh, people who are not formally qualified mm -hmm. uh, on the team mm -hmm. and uh, i could actually they were very young uh, uh, and i could get them to start using computers um, start mm -hmm. doing some spc calculations mm -hmm. and so on and i could see in their eyes mm -hmm. the the joy of learning Mm. and for me that was a, a a point which really clicked in my head mm. uh because many years later mm. uh when we decided to move back to india that was one of the pulls for me mm. because the kind of impact mm. that i can have and uh, on individuals mm. and the company can have a manufacturing company can have at the bottom of the pyramid mm. uh are significant in mm. transforming a country Mm. Uh, so that is actually why i am back in india almost mm. after a decade uh, in the us mm. uh, either to in manufacturing that's uh, so it's part of uh, mentoring also no that's right, right. yeah that's it's right part of mentoring i was i mean really teaching uh, yeah. the person how to uh, he he had no familiarity with mm. computers mm -hmm. everything was new mm -hmm. and uh, you know you could see the glee in his eyes mm -hmm. and once they bring those skills mm. they start moving up the ladder and uh, things Correct. life yeah. transforms yeah. so but uh, no uh, natesan sink recon is a typical indian tier one company large company uh, whereas in vehicle manufacturing you see a lot of women but how is it here are there women working in in this company uh, and uh, what is your uh, suggestion to empower women in the organization sure uh we certainly have women in notation um uh, i think you've seen we have uh, women on the board <laughs> we have women in uh, senior leadership positions as well mm -hmm. uh there are uh, the percentage of women varies from factory to factory some have more than others mm -hmm. um so in terms of women empowerment i think the first thing is uh, to provide opportunities to them mm -hmm. uh the second step is because sometimes uh, women may not uh, take the mm. initiative mm. maybe they are shy maybe they feel maybe they can't do it yeah. whatever but if we encourage them pull mm. them out mm. and say hey why don't you take this on mm. and give them the opportunities um i find that they very quickly pick it up mm. second is to provide them a nurturing supportive environment mm. uh, the support system mm. so that they don't fail uh because success is ultimately the biggest uh, motivator, motivator for people to feel like yeah i can Correct. do it i did it and so on um the third is uh, ask for feedback mm. from them ask for their opinions mm. on matters concerning the business if mm. they know uh, uh what they are talking about they certainly mm. know what they are talking about mm. and if we solicit their opinion again they feel valued mm. and they start contributing much more yeah and of course uh, the last aspect is ensuring that uh, you know uh, promotion and uh, compensation mm -hmm. and everything is on par based on merit mm -hmm. and gender doesn't play a role in it yeah right but uh, typically you know what happens is you no know, the manufacturing industry per se doesn't attract talent uh, there is no excitement some people say or many say uh, and when it comes to component manufacturing it's even worse people would love to know work with a brand that is known that's a oem brand not the all right in this scenario how does natation synchrocons attract women employees 
It is a challenge for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think you are right, uh, uh, working with an OEM is uh, uh, definitely better. Uh, working in the IT sector is probably even yeah, better but, yeah. for uh, women. But uh, what we've seen is that uh, there is there is a role for uh, mm. all sorts of companies, mm. Uh, mm. for uh, for all sorts of people. I don't mm. think it's specific to mm. men or women, mm. right? Mm. Not all men are going to ITU, not all men okay. are going to OEM. Mm. So likewise, I, I think women also have their own preferences. Mm -hmm. um, being part, they feel some some organizations mm. make them feel like mm. part of a family. Mm. Uh, so, they feel secure, mm. uh, they feel connected, uh, for example, they can reach out to me anytime, mm. not just women, men, we, we, okay. we are mm. uh, fairly, uh, mm. you know, uh, uh, close organization in that sense. Mm. And uh, women, um, so uh, your, your question was about uh, attracting, attracting, yeah. attracting women, uh, attracting women is possible. I think uh, as fresh graduates, we don't see uh, a challenge, mm. um, especially if you're looking at quality uh, in systems roles. Mm. Um, uh, I'm talking about computer systems or CAD, those sorts of roles in design, mm. uh, yeah. where it's more desk oriented is easier. Mm. But what we're finding is in uh, manufacturing also on the mm. shop floor, mm. we're able to attract. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, there are some women who produce very well on the shop floor, mm. operating presses and so on. Is there any particular manufacturing uh, operation where you see women are more interested? Like uh, small, uh, very fine engineering things? We are able to use them even in, uh, I think it's a mindset. Mindset, okay. If we have the mindset that women can do only certain things, I think women gravitate towards that. Yeah. If we tell them, yeah, you can do it and for a person coming fresh out of college, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter or uh, uh, they are happy to learn. Okay. And if the opportunity is uh, mm -hmm. exciting enough, I think mm -hmm. people are willing to. Okay. So, uh, what are the challenges that you faced no, in, the, in the entire career journey, uh, not career, the leadership journey uh, and how did you mitigate it? Second, are there any you know, significant milestones that you can share? Uh, you've talked about challenges. I think uh, if I were to talk about uh, my largest learning was uh, from a time when I actually started up a company mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. Uh, okay. This was uh, when uh, uh, during the dot com, mm -hmm. I was at Stanford in my MBA program. Mm -hmm. So, between my years at Stanford, I actually started up a company in the dot-com space. Mm. And uh, I think the product was a, a way ahead of the market. Mm. Um, I think the key learning for me there is who's going to pay for this product? Mm. Is there a customer? Is okay. there a market? <laughs> you know, you were very far ahead. The product may be fantastic. Yeah. Today, mm. it makes complete sense. It was in the, you know, sustainability and yeah. green space. Okay. But, but uh, we're talking, ago, we're yeah. talking uh, 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 2001, yeah, right? 2000, ago, yeah. yeah, we're talking two decades ago. I think these were probably ahead of the time in terms of mm. the market and uh, we didn't, we couldn't uh, really uh, penetrate. Uh, so, it was a good concept uh, probably mm. ahead of the time. Mm. So, today, for example, as we are developing new products, we always look for mm. who's going to buy it, what's the, what problem, real problem is it solving? A cute idea or a cute technology doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to make sure there is a real need for it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a big learning. Um, if I were to talk about a major milestone uh, at Notation after I joined, um, so one of the things we did was uh, we were a build to print uh, mm -hmm. product company. We started making our own designs. Mm -hmm. And when we made our own designs, we realized that the testing for these had to go outside India for testing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the test equipments were to a specific standard and uh, were not available anywhere in India, mm. not even with the OEMs. Mm. Um, so that's the time uh, I realized that we needed to have these test equipments, but test equipments don't have a ROI or a payback. Okay. Uh, so how does one invest when you can invest the same money? These are a couple of crores. You Correct. don't invest that in, uh, if you don't invest in production equipment, Correct. it's going to be idling. Correct. So, that's the time when I realized, you know, getting an R&D certification mm. uh, would make it very beneficial. Mm. So, we did the DSIR uh, recognition for our R&D mm. center. We've always been doing research and development, 
but we formalized it. Mm. Uh, the government had schemes where it made it attractive for us to invest in such things where there is no return. Mm. Uh, but it's it's very short term to say there is no return. But mm. because if we look at it from an overall country perspective, we do today mm. testing for a lot of the OEMs as well. Mm. So and uh, it's it's enabled us to develop and put out products in the market. Okay. So and improve the performance. So I think. Uh, uh, so, uh, I think R&D is a very large uh, milestone. Mm. If you look at it in terms of results for Natasan, mm. uh, we've introduced numerous new products mm. and new processes. 25% mm. uh, of our revenue yeah. for the past uh, is based on products we've developed in the last three years. Three years. Okay. And that's the way it is for the last five years or so. Okay. Okay. So, really it's the robust pipeline mm. that we can keep putting in. Uh, mm. And so it is really a game changer. Okay. Uh, today, those incentives are no longer there. Mm. But if you ask me, it, we still are keeping everything intact because mm. it is it is truly uh, mm. investing in uh, technology is the mm. only way we can overcome mm. all the uh, ups and downs that are going to come and hit us mm. in the mm. coming years with uh, electrification mm. and uh, yeah. yeah, there are a lot of opportunities also connected. Yeah, exactly, yeah. it is overcoming the challenges and mm. uh, making use of the opportunities. Okay, so, uh, innovation mm. and technology would be the key. Mm. So, that means you are involved in uh, new product development, R&D and even business development, uh, factory, everything all put together. But uh, how do you typically you know, balance work and life or family? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a that's a million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think there is uh, it is never a fifty fifty or somewhere in the middle. Mm. Uh, the balance point keeps shifting depending mm. on which where, uh, where we are at that point in time. I think mm. it so uh, it is a juggling mm. process mm. where you need to balance priorities over time and make mm. sure none of the balls fall down. Okay. Um, so if I were to talk about what are the things I do. I think mm. the first thing is to remind myself that I need to take care of my health. Mm. I think that's the first thing. Priority number priority one. number one is mm. because if I'm not up and running, what am I prioritizing? So that's okay. the first thing. Uh, sometimes it's hard to remember. <laughs> uh, the second thing is uh, focusing on uh, what are the most important priorities mm. and planning for it. Mm. Third thing uh, is to say no. I need to say no a lot more. The power I, of no. <laughs> power of no, because that declutters your uh, yeah. uh, your, your to do list really. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the last thing is to being in the moment. Mm. For example, mm. uh, when I'm with my kids, mm. I need to be in the moment, not doing something else. When I'm yeah. on my phone with my kids, it really irritates them. Mm. And when I'm at work, I shouldn't be thinking about home. So it's about you know just being Clear in the moment. Demarcation. Uh, yeah, just being in the moment. Okay. Uh, it's very difficult to always have demarcation saying this time mm. is uh, personal time and okay. professional time, but okay. uh, you know, it's so be flexible. So present in the present. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So that way. Mm. I would say that would be my take on it. Okay. But uh, you also look at you know, support systems. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we can't be here without all the support okay. from uh, the uh, family, family, the spouse. Uh, the uh, extended family, mm. you know, parents, in-laws and so on. Mm. Cooperation of the children, uh, very important. Mm. You need a very strong team mm. uh, in the company. Uh, so, being able to juggle all of these, uh, I think you need definitely a support system to keep this fine balance going. Also, some hobbies. So, will you? which are the things that will keep you engaged or busy? <laughs> So, uh, really enjoy traveling. Um, I used to play a lot of sports mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you know, all sorts of sports. Whenever we get a chance, we do travel. Last mm -hmm. couple of years has been mm -hmm. quite bad, <laughs> mm -hmm. not even being able to travel Correct. Correct. Uh, very far. I think this is our first uh, in-person interview, I think you yeah. said, for <laughs> you and for me. <laughs> That's interesting. So, lastly, what is your view on the new mobility, especially the electric mobility people are talking about? Do you see uh, women can get involved much more than what they did with new mobility coming in? Sure. So, the future of mobility, if you ask me, is really going to be green technology. It doesn't matter it's electric or fuel cells with hydrogen or whatever. 
it's certainly going towards more greening of the vehicle as we mm. see it today. Mm. The second uh, aspect is the vehicles are going to be very safe. Mm. With all the technology around sensors that are available, mm. uh, safety is going to become very, very, very good. Mm. Uh, the third aspect mm. is uh, uh, in terms of the uh, autonomous driving, people mm. keep saying that, you know, in large cities, crowded cities, it may mm. not come in. But like you see in aircrafts, mm. the autopilot works. Mm. Uh, and then the pilot takes over whenever there's a crisis. Right. So likewise, the proportion of autopilot may be, you know, the autonomous mm. driving may be less. Mm. But with time, I'm sure the technology will pick up that that sort of comes in. We're talking about, and, and the last thing is, mobility will be available on demand. Mm. Uh, you just get your vehicle when you need it, where you mm. need it, right? Mm. So we've seen some very nice videos of mm. uh, all the technologies uh, that are there. Mm. Now, why am I describing all this? The vehicles as we know today mm. will look very different. These are going mm. to become intelligent machines. Mm. They're going to become a lot of hardware and software, okay. uh, more like computers, mm. rather than, uh, you know, lots of mechanical parts running around here and there. And in this space, and it's going to be about artificial intelligence, it's about, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the sensors and mm -hmm. the computing powers that are being used significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think women have a very big role to play in these mm -hmm. uh, spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they've shied away from, you know, traditional mechanical, mechanical engineering yeah. and so on. Uh, I see that, uh, that this space is going mm -hmm. to transform significantly. And even if you're talking about physical mm -hmm. manufacturing, mm -hmm. you know, not just at the end uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the vehicle level, even if you're talking manufacturing, manufacturing mm -hmm. is undergoing so much transformation. Absolutely, yeah. Um, artificial intelligence is going to be, you know, the used to vehicle. run how machines are going to run Correct. and how production, uh, you, you know, you just yeah. put a part and you get, get the, you put the design and you get the part at the other mm -hmm. end. So, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot of transformation happening. I don't think uh, there's going to be anything that women can't do in this world. Um, so I think it's it's a it's an exciting opportunity. Yeah, like any space when mm. disruption happens, mm. uh, a lot of opportunities show up. Fantastic, Shubha. Thank you so much for sparing your valuable time. Very wonderful catching up with you. Thank you so thanks, much, Mr. Thanks for being part of Women in Mobility, our initiative. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Bye.